We started this chapter by introducing capacitor, which is two conductors, uh, which we call them plates of the capacitor in the vicinity of each other. And of course, then later on, we found that the closer they are together, uh, as long as they don't touch each other, uh, the better it is, the larger the capacitance. And the capacitors are in real life in electronic devices are like this. And then we talked about the capacitance of the capacitor, which is uh, C defined as the charge of each plate divided by the potential difference across between the two plates. And the unit of capacitance is a farad, which is one coulomb per volt. And usually we cross multiply this uh, equation and we say Q is equal to CV. That's better, easier for um, re remembering the equation. And then we talked about a special uh, capacitor that's called parallel plate capacitor. There are two uh, plates that are parallel and have certain surface area A and the distance between them is D. When uh, we have that geometry, the capacitance is epsilon naught A over D. And then uh, we had this experiment, this uh, question that shows that one farad is a very large a unit because epsilon naught is very small. So um, therefore we have microfarad, nanofarad, and picofarad in practice. And then we talked about um, other forms of capacitor, which is cylindrical capacitor with capacitance like this. If uh, there's a cylinder here with the radius A and a cylindrical shell of inner radius B and coaxial to, to, to each other, they create a capacitor with this capacitance, two pi epsilon naught, the length of both capacitors divided by ln of B over A. And then uh, we can have a spherical capacitor like that, which is in, inside this one is a, spher a sphere and the outside is a spherical shell of inner radius B, then uh, capacitance of that will be four pi epsilon naught AB divided by B minus A. And um, he said that if B approaches infinity, go, becomes very large, this shell, outer shell goes to infinity, then we have only one isolated uh, sphere of conducting a sphere that can be considered as a uh, capacitor with this capacitance, C equal to four pipes on R. All right, so far so good. Then we uh, have some notations for a real circuit like that. We have some notations like this, that uh, we use two parallel lines for capacitance, a capacitor in the circuit and battery like that and a switch. And we said that the capacitors can be connected in parallel like this. And the characteristic that makes them parallel is that they have the same potential difference. And it means that the one side of the capacitors, uh, one plates of them are directly connected and the other side also directly connected, connected. Therefore, they have to have the same potential difference. So we call that uh, parallel when the capacitors have to have the same charge, when there is isolated part like this, consisting of one plate of one capacitor and one plate of another capacitor with nothing else in between, just a connecting wire, then <clears throat> these two capacitors are in series. Right? They have to have the same charge and therefore uh, they, they are defined as series capacitors. All right, and then um, we calculated the uh, equivalent capacitance of some capacitors in parallel. It means that we can replace this capacitor, the capacitor combination with only one capacitor with capacitance C equivalent. C equivalent turns out in this case uh, to be uh, sum of all the capacitances. So C equivalent sum of CI. This is for parallel. And if they are in series, you can also replace this whole uh, series combination with one uh, capacitor 
with C equivalent that comes from this equation. One over C equivalent equals sum of the inverse of these capacitances. So, or C equivalent inverse equal to sum of CI inverse. Right? And then we had this problem <clears throat> and uh, we, we wanted, we given the voltage and capacitance of each one, we want to find the charge of each capacitor and the potential difference across each capacitor. So the idea was that at first we, we wrote it like this because these are the same, um, basically the same uh, physically same circuit. And then we reduce uh, the circuit to only one capacitor. So we said these two are in parallel. So we replace it with their equivalent. And then these two are in series, then re reduce it to one. And then we find the charge up here. And then we go back, we said, okay, because these are series, the charge is the same. And then we find charge of these ones and potential difference of these each one. And then we go one step back it is C12 splits into C1 and C2 in parallel. We said that the, these two have the same potential as this one. So we find the potential of these two and then we, we find charge of them. And then that was the procedure we went through in this page. Any questions about that? So um, these are, uh, this is the normal way of doing the uh, solving the capacitor circuits. And then we talked about energy stored in a capacitor. If a capacitor with capacitance C is charged to, uh, to final charge Q or uh, final potential V, where Q is equal to CV, the energy stored in the capacitor, we calculate it to be one half Q squared over C or one half CV squared or one half QV. And these are all the same because Q is equal to CV. All right, and then we uh, translated that energy into uh, the energy of the electric field in between the plates. Yeah. And we said that when there is electric field in space, there is electric field energy in the space. And the electric field energy density is equal to one half epsilon naught E squared. The larger the electric field, the larger energy density in space. And that's a general, uh, general uh, result and we will use it later, all right? And then we did this uh, problem that says that we charge this uh, capacitor with 120 volt battery and then we disconnect the battery and then connect the capacitor with another capacitor uh, that has half the capacitance, we want to find the new charges and new potential difference for the two um, capacitors. So first we find the charge of this one before we connect it to the other one and the energy in that one. And then when we connect that, these two together, uh, what happens is that some of the charge goes to the other one Therefore, because charge is conserved, the sum of the two charges should be equal to the original charge. So Q1 plus Q2 is Q. And because now they are connected in parallel, they should have the same uh, potential difference. So Q1 over C1 should be equal to Q2 over C2, like that. So this gives us two equations to solve for Q1 and Q2. And we did that, we got Q1 640 microcoulomb and Q2 320 microcoulomb. And then when we calculated the energy, new energy of both capacitors, we see that there's, uh, it is less than original energy. And then um, I commented that this energy uh, goes to uh, the resistance dissipates in the resistance of the connecting wires if there is some resistance. If there's no resistance there, it uh, uh, propagates um, energy, the electromagnetic waves pro propagate from this circuit and that electromagnetic wave uh, carries energy. So that difference in energy actually goes to electromagnetic wave that 
uh, is emitted by this circuit. All right, any questions so far? So this is where we uh, finished last uh, session. Now I'm going to continue from here and talk about the electrics, uh, capacitors with the electrics. Suppose there is a there is a capacitor here connected to a battery, and then we insert a dielectric inside the capacitor. Is the dielectric is some material like paper or uh, anything that is uh, insulating, and when when that happens, you see that if the uh, charge here is Q and the potential difference is V. Uh, here, uh, experiments show that this charge increases because it's connected to battery. Uh, v doesn't change, V prime is equal to V, but Q prime increases by a factor of kappa. This is like, looks like a K, but it's a Greek letter kappa. And we uh, use for that, it increases by that factor. And another experiment that when you don't have a capacitor connected to a battery, but it's connected to a voltmeter and there's some charge in it, the voltmeter shows potential difference. And before you insert the, um, the electric inside, the, the, Q, the charge is Q, the voltage is V. And when you do insert the you know, the electric in between the plates, then uh, the, ch the charge doesn't change because it, there's no battery to provide the charge. So the charge is constant. So Q prime becomes Q, but you see in practice that the voltage drops by a factor of K. All right, cap up. All right, so now we see these phenomena, we can uh, say that, okay, maybe, we can uh, associate this change to change of capacitance of this capacitor. For example, originally the capacitance was uh, C naught, which is Q over V. Now uh, the capacitance is C, which is Q prime over V prime. If you look at this, Q prime increased, but V does V didn't change. So you get kappa, kappa times Q over V, which is kappa times uh, C naught. If you look at this one, the Q prime over V prime, V prime uh, V reduces by a factor of, factor of K. So again, C increases by a factor of kappa. So in both cases, you see that you can associate this change to uh, changing the capacitance of the capacitor. So we say that when the dielectric is uh, in between the plates, the capacitance is different by a factor of kappa, all right? So uh, therefore parallel plate capacitor with dielectric has this uh, capacitance. We had epsilon naught A over D, now we have kappa epsilon naught A over D, all right? This kappa is called the dielectric constant of the dielectric material. And we have a table of all different uh, material with their dielectric constant, kappa. Uh, for example, this is air. For, for vacuum, this uh, kappa is exactly one. When you have something in between, because the electric field polarizes the material, it creates some dielectric uh, effect. For air, it is very, very close to one because air is very thin. And then for the other material, you see that uh, it is larger than one. And in, especially for paper, you see it's 3.5. For Pyrex, 4.7, um, Mika, 5.4, Silicon, Germanium, and water. For pure water is 80. So you see, if, if there is pure water in between plates of a capacitor, it increases the capacitance by the, 80 uh, by 80 factor, a factor of 80. And now you see these are the new material that uh, titania, ceramic, and uh, this one. So they, they increase the capacitance by a factor of a couple of hundreds. And also you see that here is the electric strength, kilovolt per millimeter. 
So th this shows that it is three kilovolt per millimeter means that if in air you have two electrodes that have um, a three kilovolts of potential difference and they are uh, one millimeter away from each other, there, <clears throat> there will be a spark in be between them. So if uh, the electric field increases uh, by this much, this is about uh, 10 to the sixth, right? Three times 10 to the sixth, three million volts per meter. So um, if there is uh, so much potential difference across something in air, then the electrons jump from one side to the other side, to the, from negative side to the positive side, and then you see a spark. And that is what you see in uh, lightning because there's a very large uh, potential difference between the clouds and the air, the, the earth. Then, uh, the electrons jump from one side to the other and you see lightning. So in air, it is that much, but in uh, paper, it is 16. So it's about five times bigger. So uh, paper has more dielectric strength, means that it can tolerate electric field of larger amount, all right? And uh, this, this one has eight, it's not much uh, bigger, all right? And what does the dielectric do? So this is a uh, dielectric that shows the atoms or molecules of the dielectric and <clears throat> there's no electric field uh, applied to it. So the external electric field is zero. But if you put that in between the plates of a capacitor, then the capacitor has electric field that applies uh, and so the molecules in this dielectric get polarized. You see each molecule, the po positive side, positive charges, which is the nuclei, they pushed this way and negative uh, electron, electronic cloud is pushed the other way. So <clears throat> normally a molecule like this has the center of all the negative charges and positive charges uh, on top of each other. But when you do this, it, it separates the uh, charges a little bit. So this may not be a large effect, but if you look uh, in a large scale, you see that at any volume inside, you see the same number of, uh, if, if, it is, if the volume is several molecule sizes big, then you see the same, essentially the same number of positive charges and negative charges. So there's nothing special inside. But if you look at on this surface, it's all positive charges. On this surface, they are all negative charges. So negative charges, this is the same as what we said before. Negative charges are induced on this side of the dielectric the and positive charges on the other side. And this dielectric the therefore creates its own electric field opposite to this one. All right, so if this is E naught, you see these are positive charges from this side and negative charges from the other side. And therefore there's an electric field from positive to negative in opposite direction of the original electric field. And therefore the total electric field inside becomes smaller. All right, <clears throat> and total electric field inside becomes smaller causes the, um, if, the, if you keep the charge constant, right, causes the potential difference to be different, to be smaller because potential difference is integral of E dot dA, dL, right? Integral of the E dot dA. If E is smaller, it means the potential difference is smaller. So uh, therefore, this electric field, if, if it is smaller by a factor of kappa, it makes the potential difference across the capacitor with the same charge uh, smaller by a factor of kappa. So <clears throat> you can uh, say the electric field decreases by a factor of kappa. So E is equal to uh, E naught divided by kappa. But you remember that E field between plates of a capacitor is uh, equal to sigma over epsilon naught, where sigma was the charge density on each plate, right? So 
uh, if this is reducing by a factor of kappa, we can associate that to epsilon naught increasing by a factor of kappa. So we said that the presence of the, the electric ch changes the permittivity of the free space epsilon naught to the permittivity of the dielectric epsilon, which is kappa epsilon naught. So because the electric field is, uh, reduces by a factor of kappa, we say that it is the same as saying the epsilon naught increased by a factor of kappa. And that works everywhere. <clears throat> In a region filled by the electric material of the electric constant kappa, all electrostatic equations containing the permittivity constant epsilon naught are to be modified by replacing epsilon naught with epsilon, which is kappa epsilon naught. For example, the Gauss law, remember, was integral over closed surface of E dot dA equals Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught, now becomes Q enclosed divided by kappa epsilon naught, right? Because the electric field reduces by a factor of kappa, we can say that this, uh, there's a kappa in, uh, in the denominator on the other side. And that is the same as saying the epsilon naught increased by a factor of kappa. And uh, in particular, as we mentioned, uh, um, for the capacitor, parallel plate capacitor, C becomes kappa epsilon naught A over D. So again, epsilon naught is increased by a factor of kappa. So this is this is how the electric uh, the electric works. Any questions on that? Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, the importance of uh, the dielectrics are like this. Usually, you see those uh, cylindrical shape that you saw. I I said I will talk about it later. These are actually long strips of um, uh, foils metal foils, and they are separated by some dielectric material. And uh, so they put them like this and then roll them up. That's why you see cylinders. And uh, so these are the, these are the uh, actual capacitors. You see it's 2,200 2, microfarad. So one, one, thousand microfarad. So these are big in the order of millifarad because uh, the dielectric also increases the capacitance by a factor. All right. Placing a solid dielectric between the plates of capacitor serves three functions. Not only in increases uh, the capacitance of the capacitor, but it has two more important functions. It, it solves the mechanical problem of keeping two large metal sheets at a very small separation without electrically touching each other, okay? So it keeps the two separated without touching each other. It also increases the maximum possible voltage between the capacitor plates. Remember the, um, the electric strength was bigger than air, so it means that you can apply larger voltage across them and it, uh, it doesn't break. Many dielectric materials have their breakdown at higher electric field than air, which was three megavolt per meter. Thus using the dielectric allows the capacitor to be charged to a higher potential difference and therefore store larger amounts of charge and energy. Okay, so um, not only the, the electrics uh, increase the capacitance, but also do those functions as well. Any questions? All right. So now we're going to do uh, some example problems. So that is all we, we need to understand. So uh, what we had in this chapter, the summary is that what is the, uh, what is the capacitor? What is the capacitance? What is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? And uh, how capacitors can be connected uh, in parallel or in series? And what is the equivalent capacitance in, um, in series and in parallel? 
all right? And then how to solve problems involving capacitance. So figure shows three circuits, each consisting of a switch and two capacitors, initially charged as indicated. You see this one is 2C and this one is C. This is charged to 6Q, this is charged to 3Q. After the switches have been closed, in which circuit, if any, will there will the charge on the left hand capacitor increase, decrease, or remain the same? So let's say for one, do you think the charge of this increase, decrease, or remain the same if you close this switch? What do you think? So somebody says, Lance says decrease. And somebody says remains the same. Is there someone who says <laughs> increases? <clears throat> so how do we decide? Um, we, have to, we have to think and base our answers on the principles. What happens when we uh, close the switch. What can we say about these two capacitors? Remember when we close the switch, we said that this plate is directly connected now to this one, and this one is connected to that one. So the potential difference is the same, right? So you, you should see that if the potential difference of this one increases, then you, you get a more charge. If it reduces, you get less charge, right? So what is the potential difference now? This one, let's, let's call this one one, number one. What is V1? V1 is 6Q in terms of Q over C, 6Q divided by 2C. So that is uh, three uh, Q over C, right? And this one, V2 is three Q over C. So they already have the same potential. So uh, because V1 is equal to V2, if you close the switch, nothing happens because the charges dis, uh, distribute, redistribute themselves to get the same potential for both of them. So same, same was correct. All right, what about this second one? For this second one, you see um, <clears throat> V1, is six over three, two Q over C, and V2 is three Q over C. So the first one, although it has a more, more charge, it has less potential difference. So if you connect them together, they balance, they go to a new potential difference, they redistribute the charge so that they get a new potential difference. But because uh, potential difference of the uh, second one, one and two. For the second one, the potential difference is larger. And if for the first one is smaller, the potential difference, new potential difference will be somewhere in between. Therefore, um, one gets more potential difference, therefore gets more charge. Okay. So uh, left capacitor gets more charge or um, or the uh, charge of the left capacitor increases. What about this case, case three? 
V1 is uh, three Q over C and V2 is three, three half Q over C, right? So now this one has more potential difference and therefore uh, the potential uh, when it balances, it gets less potential. So left cap uh, decreases, reduces charge, loses charge, can say loses. All right, and lose, loses, I think has one L, right? Loses charge. So you see, uh, the, the main principle that to use here is that when we connect the two, the uh, potential difference is the same. All right, the charges redistribute to make the potential difference the same. Any questions? Here's for each circuit, are the capacitors connected in series, in parallel, or neither? What do you think about A? Would that be in series? That, that's in series, why? Um, I'm sure there's a more articulate way to say this, but they follow in the same line. Yeah. Because we said that you see this this is isolated. Therefore, the charge of the two capacitors have to be the same. So they are series, same charge. Therefore, series. What about B? Parallel. B is parallel, yes, very good. Why is that? Uh, two, plates, uh, two plates are connected this way directly. The other two plates are also connected directly, right? So they have the same potential. So same V, therefore parallel. What about the th third one? Isn't that also parallel? Yes, it is. So again, this side is connected directly to the other side. This one is connected directly to the other. So potential difference is the same. The same V parallel. All right. So I guess these are simple enough, you get them. What about this? Any questions? Uh, please ask questions if you have any. All right. Figure shows an open switch, a battery of potential difference V, the uh, current measure meter A, which is ammeter, and three identical uncharged capacitors of capacitance C. When the switch is closed, and the circuit reaches equilibrium, what are the potential difference across each capacitor and the charge on the left plate of each capacitor? And during the charging, what net charge passes through the meter? So what do you think? Uh, we have this V connected to three identical capacitors. I mean, each capacitance C, um, when we close the switch, the, what is the potential difference across each capacitor? What do you think? Mm 
me one. Isn't it the, uh, it's like inversely proportionate to their capacitance? The, what is proportional to capacitance? The, the potential difference across each capacitor. Okay, but how much is it? Can you tell how much it is in, in terms of this V? Is it, a, is it a, the total of all the capacitance equal the V? E, yes. So one, yeah, Tana says one third of V. All right, that's correct. Because so if you close that, oops, sorry. If you close that switch, then uh, you can, from this point, from this point to this point, you can go two different ways. You can go uh, directly through the battery that get, you, you reduce the potential by V, or you can go this way and you have a, uh, some, some reduction in the voltage here some reduction in the voltage and some reduction in the voltage. And because they are identical, it should be three equal reduction, right? So each one is one third of the volt. All right, so, but you can, you can say the same thing in a different way. You can say, what is <coughs> uh, equivalent capacitance? So C equivalent uh, inverse is equal to one over C1, one, one one over C2 plus one over C3, but all of them are the same. So it becomes three over C. So one over C equivalent is three over C. Therefore, C equivalent is C over three. So that, um, what does it have to do with that? Yes, okay. And then, um, you can replace these by a capacitor with the capacitance of one third. So then you can find the charge Q for the equivalent capacitor is um, C times V, right? C equivalent times V. So it is one third of uh, C times V. And then each one gets that much charge. That gets Q and Q and Q because they are in series. And then uh, if each one has this Q, you can um, divide Q by the capacitance for each one, you get V. V1 becomes Q divided by C, which Q is this. So if you divide, you get V over three. V2 is Q over C, V3, V, v over three, right? So you can, you can say this way too. So it, each one gets uh, one third volt across it, okay? And then the charge on the left plate of each capacitor, that, we already talked about this. this is this is positive Q because it's connected to positive side. This becomes negative Q, then positive Q, negative Q, positive Q, negative Q. Right? During the charging, what next net charge passes through the meter? What do you say to that? So that's positive Q, that is uh, V over three. And that is also positive Q. The charge that goes on the plate comes from the battery. So it passes through the meter. Does it make sense? Let me make this a little bit neater. So we have negative Q on this side, positive Q on the other side. Negative Q on this side, positive Q on this side, negative Q, sorry, 
Oh, I said the other way around, sorry. <laughs> is negative, positive. Positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, they are in series. Make sense? Easy enough? All right. All right. Now this one involving a uh, dielectric. When a dielectric slab is inserted between the plates of one of the two identical capacitors in the figure, do the following properties of the capacitor increase, decrease, or remain the same? You want to see whether the capacitance remains the same, uh, charge, potential difference, potential energy, and how about the same properties of the other capacitor? What do you think? What does you want to find the following properties of that capacitor. That means the one that we insert uh, the electric to. Is the capacitance decrease, increase, or remain the same? Is it a hard question? Increase. Yes, increases by a factor of kappa, right? And kappa is always more than one. What about the charge of it? Does the charge increase, decrease, or remain the same? Remain the same. How do you know? How do we decide whether the charge remains the same or increase or decrease? <clears throat> Somebody said increase. Why did you say increase? For me, for me, I said it uh, remained the same because um, the capacitance are in series. Yes, the, capacitance, the capacitors are in series. And then? That's all I know. But <laughs> it might right. be increasing kappa. kappa as yeah. Um, yes. uh, Jordan says, if capacitance increases, charge increases. Uh, what about its potential difference? What do you think about its potential difference? Does it decrease or increase or remain the same? So here you see the, the charge increases a little bit because you have now two capacitors. You see between, uh, before you uh, put the, uh, the electric in, uh, you have two capacitors and the, uh, what is the equivalent capacitance of the two capacitors before the dielectric? Can you tell? They are in series, aren't they? There are two capacitors in series, and we said that for two capacitors, we can say C equivalent is equal to C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2, right? So this is C squared divided by 2C, so it becomes C over 2. So C equivalent becomes like that, but after you, um, you insert the, the electric C equivalent, new, new C equivalent, because the second one becomes kappa epsilon, kappa times C. So it becomes C times kappa C, 
divide by C plus kappa C. So one of the C's cancel, so you get uh, kappa over a one plus kappa times C. Sorry, uh, one plus kappa, yes. So the equivalent capacitance was that, now it is this. Let's say kappa is two. So if kappa is two, you have two, two third here, you have one third, this is two third of C, this is one half of C, which one is bigger? You see that this two third is bigger than one half. So one of the capacitors become bigger in capacitance, therefore the total capacitance of the circuit becomes bigger, but we have the same voltage applying, therefore the charge increases for the equivalent capacitor. And therefore, because we are, they are in series, each one gets more charge, right? So each one gets more charge. But what about potential difference for this one? If it gets more charge, does it mean that it gets more potential difference as well? Well, why, why do you think the C equivalent is wrong? Yeah, you see here, uh, C times kappa, we have kappa, kappa C square divided by uh, one plus kappa times C. And one of the C's cancel become kappa, where one plus kappa C. All right. So, so we said that this is this new capacitance is more than this old capacitance, but we have the same voltage. If the capacitance increases. Q, which is uh, C times V, is capacitance increases with the same voltage, Q increases. So when you insert this, uh, the electric, the charge of each one of them increases. All right. And then this one that had the same capacitor, now it has more potential difference. But the sum of the potential differences it stays the same. Therefore, this has to have less potential difference. So the capacitance goes up, the charge goes up, but the potential difference goes down for that capacitor. To see, it is a very, uh, you have to be very careful when you're analyzing. What about potential energy? If potential energy increase or decrease or remain the same? In order to answer that, you need to see what is the potential energy. You can write it as <clears throat> um, you put U equal to Q squared over uh, C or one half CV squared or one half Q times V, one half Q times V, okay? So we said that the charge increases, but the potential difference decreases. So it's not easy to decide this. One of them increase, one of them decrease. And how much do they decrease or how much do they increase? <clears throat> we have to do some calculation. It's hard to tell. Let's see if I, if I write one half uh, Q squared over C. Again, the charge increases and capacitance also increases. So we cannot tell whether U increases or decreases. If we, if we use the new charge uh, using the kappa, kappa, let me <clears throat> get rid of this. Um, if we use the kappa, and then we can put kappa equal to whatever. So this is, this is the new, 
um, this is the new C equivalent, then Q prime for both of them is, um, is C equivalent times V, isn't it? So it becomes kappa over one plus kappa times uh, CV, right? Previously, it was um, Q before, this is a bit prime is after Q was uh, C, equi C equivalent times V, which was one half C, CV, right? So you see again, this one is bigger than this. The charge is increased by a factor and the voltage decreases. How much the voltage decreases for this one? So we found the Qs and now we want to find the voltage. So because, uh, let me feel of that too. You see this one gets more charge, therefore it gets more potential difference. So um, let me call this one and two. So V2 prime means the V2 before, let's say, V2, v, V1, sorry. V1 before was what? Was uh, one half of V, right? And therefore, V2 also was, V2 before was one half V. Now v, V1 prime becomes one half, no, not one half, V1 prime becomes uh, Q prime divided by C. Q prime is this. If you divide by C, it becomes kappa of one, over one plus kappa times V. Again, you see the, the voltage across one uh, increases. Right? But what is the voltage across two? V2 is equal to V minus V1. V2 prime becomes V minus V1 prime. And that is, uh, let me write here. This is, this is V and this is V1 prime. So it becomes V can be factored times one minus kappa over one plus kappa, right? So it becomes, um, becomes like this, you can write it V times, uh, one plus kappa, one plus kappa, this is for one minus kappa over one plus kappa. And now denominators are the same. Numerator become one plus kappa minus kappa. So one over, so V, V2 becomes V divided by one plus kappa, right? So V2 prime is V over one plus kappa. So it was V over two, now it is V over one plus kappa, but kappa is more than one. So it is smaller. So that's why I said potential difference decreases. And then what about potential energy? Potential energy, U, you can now, because you have the voltage of uh, V2 prime and you have uh, Q2 prime also. So we can say one half uh, Q prime V prime, V two prime, right? Q is the same, so one or two is the same. So U becomes one half, Q prime is this, uh, one over, sorry, kappa over one plus kappa times CV uh, times V two prime, which is V, and divide by one plus kappa. So this is V squared divided by 
one plus kappa squared, right? So now this is the new energy u, u2 prime, right? u2 prime. So the new u2 prime was this, how much was it before? u2 was one half uh, c times v squared, v, v squared over four, v over two squared, v squared over four, right? And the voltage across it was v over two, now square that. So it becomes one eighth of c v squared. Now we, we need to see which one is bigger, one eight or this factor. And you see that if, K, if kappa is two, then these two cancels with this two and becomes one over three squared. So you see the energy is one ninth, but here was one eighth. So the energy also decreases. should point this in this direction. All right. So you see, it is complicated. It is hard to, to keep track. It is the best way to uh, understand all of these is to make a table like this. You, you uh, call initial and final, C1 initial, C2 initial, C1 final, C2 final, and C equivalent initial, C equivalent final. And then for each case, see how much is the capacitance, how much is charge, how much is voltage, and how much is the energy, all right? So at the beginning, C1 and C2 are both C. And when you insert, C1 doesn't change, C2 increases by a factor of kappa. And then C equivalent before, becomes C over two, C equivalent after becomes kappa C divided by one plus kappa. And then you can de decide about charges. The charge of uh, C equivalent uh, initially was CV divided by two because that was C equivalent times V. And that becomes uh, C equivalent final times V. For that one, it was C uh, the same as charge of the C equivalent. And now these are also the same as charge of the equivalent. Now you see that uh, C2, uh, charge of C2 increases, sorry, uh, what did I say? It increases because kappa divided by kappa plus one. Kappa divided by kappa plus one is more than one half. So the, uh, the charge of C2 incre increases, charge of, charge of C1 also increases. You see, it goes from here to here because the charge of the total increases, right? And now we can decide about the uh, voltage. For each case, voltage is charge divided by capacitance. So this, this charge, divided by this capacitance is V. This charge divided by this capacitance is also V. And also V over two, V over two, as we know. Now this one becomes kappa V over kappa plus one. And that one becomes V over kappa plus one. That's what I just drove, right? And then the energy for this one is, um, energy is one half CV squared. This one half of this times this squared, right? So it becomes uh, one fourth of CV squared. And then for this, the same half of this times this squared becomes that. And then for that one is that, these are easy, one half C times V over two squared one half C times V over two squared. The last one, the energy of C1, one times C times kappa squared, V squared, so then divide by kappa plus one squared. You can decide whether that becomes 
bigger or smaller. And for this one becomes one half uh, C times V squared. So one half kappa squared C squared, sorry, so one half kappa C times V squared divided by um, kappa plus one squared. So now you can decide which one, uh, which one is which. Okay, so it's all mathematical, but now it is organized. So if you want to see the energy between this and this, we, we saw that the energy decreases, right? And for this and this, because this kappa is squared, if kappa is two, this becomes two over nine, right? This was one over eight, this was two over nine. So the energy of the C1 increases, but energy of C2 decreases. Very unintuitive. All right. Any questions? All right. So we move on. If you don't have any questions, a parallel capacitor is connected to a battery of electric potential difference V and then disconnected after it was charged. If the plate separation is decreased, do the following quantities increase, decrease, or remain the same. So this is a parallel plate capacitor. It has charge Q, negative Q. And then we bring them closer to each other. It's disconnected from the battery. So therefore charge remains the same. What happens to the capacitance? So if if D is here and A is here, now D is smaller. A is so, so the capacitance increases, right? Because yes. the capacitance is epsilon naught A over D. If D decreases, then capacitance increases, right? What about charge on the capacitor? We already said that. It, there's no place where the charge can be in, uh, can in, increase, and can bring in or can take out. So the charge stays the same. What about potential difference across the capacitor? This one goes up. Doesn't that also increase? Why would oh, it increase? Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry, decrease. No, no, no. Decrease, why? Because um, huh? capacitance is the charge over um, potential. The potential difference, uh, yes. V. So potential, yeah, potential is equal to charge over capacitance and capacity Q, increases. So Q over C, right? V is Q over C, because Q is CV, right? And if C increases, Q stays the same, V decreases, right? And then energy is stored in the capacitor. What happens to that? Uh, wouldn't it also decrease? D is smaller than D prime is smaller than. How how do you know? How do you get to that? The energy is isn't it equal to one half charge times potential. And if the potential is decreasing, then the charge is the same. Oh, uh, one half Q V. Yeah. Yeah. Good choice. Yes. You see, Q stays the same, but V decreases. Therefore, U decreases. Right. Very good. So what about the magnitude of the electric field between the plates? What do you think?
What is mag what is magnitude of electric field formula for it? So electric field was what? Wasn't sigma over epsilon naught? And sigma was Q divided by A. Q stays the same, A stays the same, so E stays the same. What about the energy density of the electric field? Energy density was UE one half epsilon naught E squared. If E stays the same, this stays the same. Yes. All right. So you see that these questions are from the book and they are really good questions. They ask, yes, that's why some people really like this book because it has very good uh, questions that makes you think and understand deeply uh, the subject. All right, any questions on this? All right. Here, in the figure, the battery has a potential difference of V, which is 10 volts, and the five capacitors each have a capacitance of 10 microfarad. What is the charge on capacitor one? and capacitor two. What do you think? The capacitor one is easy. How much charge is it on? The 10 microfarad. There's 10 micro, yes. The, the, all of them are 10 microfarad each. And we want to see charge of C1. Q is equal to? C over V. No, C times V. C times V, my bad. Yes, Q, C, Q is equal to CV. So C is 10 microfarad times 10 volts, right? So micro, the farad times volt is coulomb. This is micro coulomb, 100 micro coulomb. Okay, so that's C1. Is, that one is easy because it's connected directly to the battery, right? The, volt, uh, the potential difference is just uh, 10 volts. What about C2? So how do we, figure out C2. We said that we have to, this is a complicated uh, combination. We have to simplify which, which ones are parallel or series. So you have in the like top right corner, you'd have the C2 and the other one. Yeah, and, let's call yeah. this C3, C4, C5. Yeah, so C2 and C3 are uh, parallel to C4. So you'd yeah, have right. to reduce C2 and C3 as series and then put them. Uh -huh. Yes, very good. Yes, C1, C2 and C3 are in series. And then when you replace them by it, uh, equivalent, then it is parallel to C4. And then uh, when you replace all of those with their equivalent, then it is series with, um, yes, with with C, C5. All right, so you see this, this is, if you name them, it will be like this. The first, first these become, uh, become this, right? And then it's parallel to C4. Then these two become that. And then these two become this, all right? So we simplify uh, to, to this one and then that one and then that one. 
Now we can find the, the charge of C2345. We call it Q2345. Is what? Q is CV. And C2345 uh, times V, right? And what is C2345? All right. First, we need to calculate C23. What is C23? Is C2 times C3 divided by C2 plus C3? Remember? One that? fifth? No. Or 10 times mm -hmm. 10 divided by 10 plus 10. That's five. Microphone. <laughs> Microphone, right? C23 is five microfarad. Five, 10 times 10 divided by 10 plus 10. Yes. 100 divided by 20 is five. And then these two are in uh, parallel. What is C23? So C23 is five microfarad. What is C234? 15. 15, they add up. Sorry. What about C2345? Yeah, 10 times, you know, 10 times 15 divided by 10 plus 15. That's 150 divided by 25. It's six, right? Oops. Six. Yeah, six. Microfarad. So this will become six times 10. So this 60 microcoulomb. The charge of uh, C2345 becomes six, right? Six, 60. This is 60 microcoulomb. And then when you go back here, they are in series. So this gets 60. This gets 60 microcoulomb each, right? So now we can find the potential difference across C5. So V5 is the potential difference across C5 is Q5 over C5. Q5 is 60 um, micro coulomb divided by C5, which is 10 microfarad. Coulomb over farad, micro cancels. Coulomb over farad becomes volt, becomes six volts. And then, what is the uh, what is the voltage across this one? You can do C two three four divide by sixty, or you can say, okay, we had ten volts here. Uh, six volts is across this, so four should be across that. So uh, V234 is equal to 10 minus six becomes four volts. Or you can say um, V236 becomes uh, Q236, two, three, not 236, two, 234, two, sorry, 234. Divide by um, C234. C234 is 15. So 60 over 15 is still 4, right? So voltage of C234 is um, 4 volt. And then you go back to this situation. You go back here, right? So voltage of C4 and C23 are both the same as that, which is uh, four volt. So C4 equals to C23 equal to four volts. Now C23 has uh, four volts. What is the charge Q of 23? Is C23 times V23. Sorry, these are these are V23. These are V4 and V23. I'm sorry. I I make a lot of little mistakes. All right. So C2 uh, C23 was what? 
C to three was five times um, V to three, which is four. So it is 20 microcoulomb. All right? And then we go back here. C2 and C3 both have 20 microcoulomb. So Q2 equals to Q3 equal to uh, 20 microcoulomb. All right? And now that we know the charge of Q2, we can find V2. V2 is Q2 over C2. Q is equal to CV again. So 20 microcoulomb divided by um, 10 microfarad. That's two volts. All right, now we have everything. Basically, we can calculate uh, voltage of, um, because they are identical voltage of C3 is the same. So we found charge and <coughs> um, voltage of everything basically, except charge of C4 that we can find using its charge of C4 is uh, how much? The voltage was four, four times 10 is 40. So basically in order to answer this question, what is the voltage of C2? You have to uh, solve the whole circuit, All right? So we go, we simplify and then come back. All right? Any questions? I guess that's that's all the time we have. Let me see what we have. We have a couple of more problems, but uh, I put the notes. I I did put the note up, so you can do those for yourself. All right. Any questions? <clears throat> 